Alright everyone, I've got for you today another unboxing video and we're going to be looking at some more die cast. This time a recent eBay purchase I made and what's in here is some Ertl Thompson Friends characters that I recently scored. I believe most of these are from the 90s if I'm correct. But anyways, let's get into the box here. Now of interest, I just want to show you guys this little dot sticker on the back of the box here and I'm not going to say anything else about that but I just want you guys to remember because we might understand that a little further along in this video. Now as I'm opening the box here I wanted to mention that everything you'll see here I paid sixty dollars for it delivered to my door so you guys can be the judges of whether or not I got a good deal or whether or not I got ripped off. Personally, I think what I got in this bundle was pretty good value, but again, like I said, you guys will have your say in this as well. But just going to pull everything out here, and I'm probably gonna speed up the video a little bit because it's probably gonna take me a while to unbox everything. Okay, so it took a little while to unpack all those Ertles, and I've gone ahead and arranged them into the lots which they came in, because I didn't get them all in one big bundle. They were actually two separate lots from the same seller. And this is the first lot I got. As you can see here, quite a few engine characters, a vast amount of rolling stock here, and then also a couple road characters. And this would be the second lot, one road character, a few engines, and again, a very large amount of rolling stock. Definitely not a shortage on that. And quite a few duplicates among these two lots, but I'll go ahead and show you guys what I got here a little bit closer. The first one up is Thomas, and I've got two of these models, both which are dated 1985. But I know that's not when these came out because they got the 3D plastic faces, and the 1985 models had sticker faces. But one thing I will say about these Thomases and pretty much all the models that came in this bundle is they all look practically mint. There is not a lot of play wear on these. I mean, this one here is missing a couple stickers, but there's literally no chipping on it from what I can tell. And another place to look for play wear would be on the bottom, and the bottom looks clean. There's no scratch marks or anything. So I, I get the feeling a lot of these were basically just display pieces and I'll bring the other Thomas in and this one has all the buffer stickers as you can see a uh, bit of peeling there on that sticker but overall you know these are complete nothing's broken off of them but I will say with this model here the face is creeping me out now the next one is Percy and you can see I got three of him all which are dated 1987 but again that's not a telltale sign of when these models were made but Something interesting though is I actually had a YouTuber come to me and ask, Hey Plowbender, when you get in these bundles of Ertles, what is the most common character that you seem to find? And he was a bit surprised, as I'm sure many would be, that my answer was that Percy was the most common one that I would come across. Because I think many people would think that Thomas would always be the one you'd find the most of. But no, it's actually Percy, and I can tell you guys of many cases where I've bought bundles of Ertles, and Thomas is not even in the bundle. 
but it seems like every time I come across a Percy, and it's a, it's odd. You know, if anyone's got a theory as to why I seem to find Percy all the time and why Thomas isn't the most common Ertle that comes in these bundles, uh, let's t talk in the comments below. But you can see here with this model, though, it's in about the same condition as what I've said before. It looks mint. It's just missing a couple stickers at the back here, but nothing's broken off or missing. And then if we look at this next one, about the same condition, although it's missing a sticker at the back. And if you guys remember that little sticker dot I saw on the package at the beginning of the video, I think that's where that came from. But lastly is this one here, which I think is the best out of the three, because it doesn't seem to be missing anything. Although I noticed it's a lighter shade of green than the other two, and I don't know if you can tell that through camera or not. But anyways, yeah, there's another three Percy's, as if I needed more. The next one we'll look at is Henry, and he's dated 1987, although I believe it was 1985 he was released with the sticker face. And this one here, if I'm correct, is a 1990 model. But again, this model is practically mint. I cannot see really any chipping on this. I mean, there is some scuffing on the side of the model and a little bit of sticker peel right there but it just amazes me a majority of these models must have been display pieces or they were not played with that much but I have a couple issues with the Ertl Henry and the first being he doesn't have wheel arches now this isn't that big of a deal because if this model was made to replicate the post rebuild model then that makes sense although I don't understand why Ertl gave Henry red side rods these would have definitely looked better if they were gray but I mean overall it's not a bad looking model in my opinion now we've got Oliver and this is another model that is in remarkable condition dated 1993 and that would be correct because Oliver was released in 93 but I bought this model because I wanted to use it for a scrap model of Oliver but Unfortunately, I just think if I tore this down and redid it into a scrap model, it would be a crime because it just it looks way too nice to tear apart. And I think I'm better off taking this model and passing it on to somebody that wants a near mint condition Oliver for their Ertl Thomas collection. Since we've got a bit of a great western theme going on, I thought it was only appropriate to bring up City of Churro next. And I don't need to tell you guys the condition of this. You can see it for yourself. This model is just beautiful. And I actually know a guy personally who drove the real locomotive only a couple years before it was withdrawn. And he was really fortunate because that's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I got to say that, you know, this model here does not disappoint. It captures the locomotive perfectly. And I would say this is the one Ertl piece from the Thomas and Friends line that a lot of people want to snatch up solely for the fact it's City of Churro. And any fans of the locomotive would definitely want this. But this is definitely a very nice model. So I've got two of the mountain engines Ertl made, Godred and Caldy, and looking at Godred here, you can see he's pretty good. Got a bit of a chip on the funnel there, but overall, not too bad. Uh, his back face has lost an eye. Ouch. <laughs> but yeah, basically he's all here. And then we also got Caldy, who is in better condition. Looks like I don't see any chipping on him. Uh, something I did forget to mention with Godred, though, is it looks like his sticker is crooked, so that'll have to be corrected, because I got plans for this model. Next one up is Devious Diesel, and oh god, that face is creeping me out. But anyways, this model looks good. It's a little dusty. Uh, probably should have cleaned all these models off before I showed them. Oh well. But yeah, I mean... I gotta say, Diesel, honestly, he looks about as good as the mint one I have in my collection. Um, I am seeing a couple stone chips on the edges here, but other than that, uh, just looking at the bottom, 1990, that'd be correct, because Diesel was released that year alongside Duck, the Troublesome Trucks, and a few other things. 
And of course, his casting was later used for characters like Aryan Burt and Splatter and Dodge. But probably not much more to say about this model, though. And the last one is Daisy, who is looking very lovely today. And yet again, we got another model that looks practically mint. And I do like Daisy's look and her paint livery, but this model bothers me because I feel like Ertl made the model sit too low. I'm pretty sure Daisy Season 2 model did not look like this. And because of the fact that the model sits so low, Ertl was not able to incorporate a front coupler onto it. And that might not be a big deal to some. Personally, I could live with it, but what bothers me though is the back here because the buffer beam sits so low it leaves the back coupler so high and it just looks out of place now I guess at the end of the day you can still hook your milk tanker onto Daisy and make her blow a fuse and maybe that's all that really matters so let's look at some rolling stock and we'll start with the breakdown train or breakdown truck and this piece is all plastic which may bother some but I mean it looks really good either way it looks really reminiscent of what the breakdown train looked like in the earlier seasons and it's got the outriggers on it which the real ones were actually missing in the early seasons and does have a moving crane arm you can raise it up like that and the hook does fold down and you can turn it a lot of this feels tight so I'm gonna say again that this has either been a display piece or had very little play but one thing that's really nice if you want to get two breakdown trains you go out and buy the UK variant with the U style coupler and you can actually uh, hook the breakdown trains together so they're facing each other that looks just like the one in the series so aside from the breakdown train we also got brake vans four toads to be exact and these are all dated 1995 and some of these do show a bit of play wear on them the roofs are a bit scuffed and they're yellowed I don't know if you'll be able to see that through camera uh, a little bit of chipping on the black on the buffers it looks like but nothing's broken off nothing's missing these don't look too bad and I'm not gonna show all of these but uh, I will show this toad here because this looks like the best of them all the roof doesn't look too bad and it's a uh, Again, uh, no paint chipping or anything. Just uh, amazes me the condition of these. It's just like, wow. But anyways, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's four toads. In that bundle, there were also these two troublesome trucks. You got the forward-facing one and the rearward-facing one. Although I don't think these are from the same set because if you look on the bottom, the numbers don't match. And if they were from the same set, you'd have a matching set of numbers. But in a way, you kind of do have a set here, just not uh, official. And I mean, these are one of those pieces of rolling stock you can never have enough of. And I'll definitely be adding these into my collection to go with the rest of the rolling stock that I have. I've also got the milk and tar tankers, and they're both dated 1993, and even though it's hard to read, they do have the same number stamped on the bottom. So these would definitely be from the same set. Now, I can see that there is a bit of play wear on the tanker. It does show a bit of scuffing and yellowing of the plastic. But again, we got a piece here that nothing's broken off, nothing's missing. Uh, the tar tanker, on the other hand, I'd say if it does have wear on it, it shows it a lot better. Uh, I would assume this was probably played with as much as the milk tanker, but uh, there's those two pieces. Now there's more tankers, and I've got three of the Sodor fuel tankers, or uh, they were sometimes referred to as oil tankers. But these two here are a matching set because they do have the same number stamped underneath them although this one is upside down but you can see there they got the same number and if I just bring up this other one here you can see that the numbers don't match so this one is obviously missing its mate but this is a matching set right here and these mm, maybe have a little bit of play hard to tell but uh, they definitely don't show it so yep more of those. Next we've got five Sodor mail coaches and I'll just look at this one right here but 
they're all dated 1995. They've all got the same number stamped on the bottom, so that's not always an indicator that you have an original set. But like everything else, these show little to no signs of wear on them. They're really good looking little models, plastic. But uh, one disappointing aspect of these, not really of these themselves, but uh, the same tooling these have was used for the Ertl Express coaches, and in the end it made the Express coaches look too small. But overall these aren't too bad, so in a way you've got two sets here plus one extra. But uh, yeah, there's the Sodor mail coaches. Now I've got five old coaches, and some of you are probably thinking, wow, that's a lot of brake coaches, but... Uh, unfortunately, a brake coach is the only one Ertl ever did, so if you want to do a train of these like they did in the series, it's just not going to look as good. But these are all dated 1997, but they've all got different numbers stamped on the bottom of them. And I don't know how well you'll see all those, but they are different numbers. Uh, there was one complete set in the back here, although... This coach here has a broken coupler on it, but overall, I mean, these, like the male coaches, the way they are, they don't really show much signs of wear other than that one at the back. And up next, we got Annie and two Clarabels, and these are all dated 1987. They've all got different numbers on them. Although these wouldn't have been made in 87 because if that was the case, the faces on the models would be a lot finer in uh, printing uh, based on what I've seen with my ones I know were actually made in 87. But overall, they're not too bad. Nothing's broken off. Nothing's missing. They don't look like they've had any play wear on them. I thought the roofs on these may be a little yellowed. But if they were yellowed, they would have had to have been out in the sun, and these decals, or actually stickers, would have been faded from the UV light. But, I mean, overall, these look pretty good, and, I mean, you've at least got one set of Annie and Clarabelle from these. Lastly, for rolling stock, we got four Henriettas, and I'm just sitting here like, wow. But... These are comparable to the toads that I showed earlier. They've got scuffing and scratching on the roofs. The roofs look a little discolored. But again, nothing's broken off. Nothing's missing. Uh, minimal paint loss or chipping from what I can tell. And this Henrietta here, I'd say, would probably be the best out of the four of them. Because it doesn't seem like a lot of wear on the roof. Everything's here. There's no chipping of the paint and what have you. Um, these are all dated 1992, by the way. Forgot to mention that. But, yeah, four Henriettas. We've got four road vehicles to look at, and we'll start with Balgi. He's dated 1993, and this bus really looks nice. I do notice, though, that the axles feel a bit tight, and that leads me to believe this bus doesn't have that many miles on it. But overall, you know, it looks pretty good. The uh, decals are what really brings this to life, although I do notice that this front one here is actually on a little crooked. So I'd assume this was either made on a Monday morning or a Friday afternoon. And something else I notice is Bulgy's face. His eyes don't seem to have uh, printed right. The One looks off and the other just the pupil doesn't look right at all. So uh, it's a bit comical there. So the next one is George, and he looks pretty good, and just looking here, I believe he's dated 95, it's just in there under the roof, I can't see it that well, but I'm thinking it might be 95, but yeah, George looks good, although I noticed that his front roller seems to be a little crooked, and it's fixed, so I can't really turn it to straighten it or anything. But I also noticed that the seam just under his face right there is actually open. And what really concerns me, though, is the that there is cracking in the paint right here. You can see it all along the roller frame. And why this concerns me is because it could be the paint that's cracking, or it could be the underlying die cast. Because sometimes companies do get a bad batch of die cast, and it just 
falls apart over time. Uh, some of my higher end die cast vehicles have actually uh, run into this issue as well, but if that is the case and this roller frame has a bad die cast, it's not going to be uh, much longer before all this just you know falls apart and uh, bet you if I manipulate it enough I probably could get it to break, but I'm not going to. Next here is Terrence, and he is dated 1992, I believe that was the year Ertl released him, if I'm correct. And he is another one that looks pretty good, looks almost mint condition. And I do know in some cases you can actually get a Terrence in used condition that looks just like this, you know, good paint and everything, but... Uh, the kids will pull the tracks off, and I know as a kid that is definitely something I did when I was younger, but somehow I managed to keep track of my tracks for all those years. But uh, yeah, this Terrence here, if it was played with, then it obviously managed to keep the tracks. The last one we'll be looking at is Trevor, and I believe he's dated 1991. And he's another one that looks almost mint. And I can see there is a couple paint chips on the corners. But other than that, this model doesn't look too bad. And it just really looks nice. And I like Trevor as a character because I got a lot of time for these older steam powered tractors. And this model impresses me. Although I think one improvement on Ertl's end would have been to add some black paint to the wheels for the tires. Because as is. Uh, the wheels don't seem to stand out as much, but still, it's a nice model and a uh, really good rendition of Trevor. So here's another look at all the Ertles that I got in. And the plan was when I bought this bundle that I was going to use some of these for customs that I wanted to build. But after looking at them and seeing some that are in almost mint condition, I really can't bring myself to rip them apart, chop and change and repaint them. So I think what I'll do is I will hang on to some of the ones that are in rougher condition and use those for customs. But I think some of these better looking ones would probably be better off being on sold to someone that maybe wants to add these characters to their Ertl collection. So that wraps up my look at these Ertls. And personally, I feel like I got a really good deal on these. Because if you do the math at $60 delivered to my door... For 45 Ertles, that comes to around $1.33 per train, which I think is really good value, especially when you consider that in mint condition, some of these, depending on the character and the packaging they're in, can go for anywhere from $10 to $20, if not more. So, I mean, I think I scored big with this. But as I mentioned before, I'm only going to be hanging on to some of these for customs. I'm probably going to on-sell most of them just because I don't really think I need, you know, four more Henriettas or five more mail cars or three more Percy's. But anyways, uh, let me know your guys' thoughts on this bundle, whether you think I got a good deal or whether you think I got ripped off. It's up to you. But uh, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.